when you have a standard set up, we'd like it enforced. We'd like it followed. And right now, the EPA has put out guidelines that are of concern to us. We're on day 20 of no diff in our tank. We're running straight water. Um, no problem with acceleration. My name is Jack Allen. I've been with Navistar for 25 years and I'm currently the president of the North American Trucker. 2001, the EPA established a near zero NOx standard of 0.2 grams. This was a standard that was going to apply to all commercial trucks and go into effect in January 2010. So what the EPA did back then is they evaluated a number of technologies to make sure that the manufacturers could meet that standard a full nine years away. The standards that we've set to reduce oxides of nitrogen, NOx, which is a primary component of smog, are important to the public health of California. Well, basically, it's, it's, they're trying to reduce emissions from diesel vehicles for health concerns, environmental concerns. And they built a standard that was uh, about one-tenth of what the standard was uh, going into the rulemaking. SDR was determined by the EPA to be infeasible because of the burden it put on the operator of the vehicle to maintain the vehicle at 0.2 knocks given the operating and maintenance requirements associated with SCR. Go back to 2001. First SCR, no way, it's, not, it's infeasible at any time. Then get to 2007, well, SCR is okay, but there's strict guidelines around what you can do and it has to operate all the time and urea has to be commercially available. Now you fast forward to 2009. The loopholes just got bigger. Now you can operate the vehicle when the system is disconnected, when the system's frozen, or thirdly, when the system is empty. It's our belief that whatever technology you use to meet these clean air standards for 2010 model year engines should have to be in place, operated, fully functional. We have nothing against SCR as a technology. Our issue is the way the EPA and the engine manufacturers are deploying this system in 2010. Right now, the EPA guidelines are of concern to us because, because there's a loophole you can literally drive a truck through. The trucks we tested were a Kenworth T660 equipped with a Cummins 15-liter engine, a Freightliner Cascadia equipped with a DDC 15-liter engine, and a Dodge 5500 equipped with a 6.7-liter Cummins engine. We're testing this vehicle to see what the emissions are under a variety of different driving conditions with and without urea, which is a necessary component of the SCR system. We're not told, here's the answer. We're told, go figure out what the answer is. And so it's up to us, you know, we're hiring people that are independent and their work for us is the same work they do for the agency. Their instrument records the value and we deal with, deal with and report those values. This system here is uh, a known system uh, being used by EPA and ARB to quantify emissions, including quantifying the performance of after treatment devices. So going into this, what we expected to find was that uh, the emissions levels would be elevated uh, under certain conditions, but the, the way the vehicle drove and the D-rate system that the EPA promised would be deployed would make the vehicle really unacceptable to drive and therefore the driver would take the vehicle out of operation and fill up the urea tank. No hesitation in the motor. No problems with the motor. No problems with acceleration at all. We've been operating this vehicle since last week. Uh, we started off with some DEF in the tank and extinguished the DEF, burned it all up. What we're wanting to do is to run the vehicle on road, real world conditions, 
and then under different types of conditions. For instance, uh, on the freeway, nice level ground at, at steady state, uh, going up a hill, pulling something up, up to a higher elevation. Coming back down the hill, you're, you're going to have the opportunity to coast and be riding your brakes. We've been driving for 20 days. The truck started in Los Angeles, and then they moved the truck to Sacramento, up to Truckee, and back across to San Francisco, all the way up to the Oregon border, and as far south as Bakersfield, Redwood National Forest yesterday. Since this started, we put on roughly 11,000 miles. We started off with a full tank of diesel exhaust fluid, which is DEF, and the SCR is operating under full capacity. And as the DEF drops, you get closer to empty, you start getting visual alarms in the cab, and you get auditory alarms to remind you, put fluid in. Well, we ignored them, and we let it go to empty. The engine was derated as according to its inducements, and seemed to operate fine. We got up the hill and got down. Uh, no, there is no DEF in the, in the tank. It is empty. How's the truck riding right now? Just, just fine for 55 mile an hour. The truck combined load is just a little under 80,000 pounds, so it's almost the maximum load. We had no DEF in the tank, and we drove it. We filled it up with diesel fuel, and we drove it, and it did not go into a five mile per hour major derate. Once we were derated, and we said, well, how do we repair this? What do we do, what do, we do now? So we added, uh, that's our thinking, water to the tank. And as you can see, all the lights are off. And also, the DEF tank indicates that it's completely full of DEF. It cleared everything, and all the bells and alarms. So we had a few thousand miles when we were under a 25% D rate. The rest of the time we cleared it with water, and we were back running normal. Okay, we we're heading back to Sacramento, getting on to Interstate 80, running through the gears, having no problem with acceleration. We are running this truck for the last 20 days solely on H2O. We have not had a bit of death in the truck, no problems whatsoever. There's nothing that's affecting how this truck runs. I've been driving this truck for five days now. This is my fifth day. Yesterday we went to 1% and had no D rate. We were still able to go along and we went down to 0% and we're still able to go another 500 miles with no D-rate. It's been running perfectly fine. The gauge tells me that I have 22 miles left. And what does that mean? That means that after 22 miles that this truck will not restart without refilling the DEF. Our reading changed. The DEF says that we have zero left, and now it says to refill the DEF, the engine will not start. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the motor at this time. Saying that the DEF fluid level is at 0% and it will not start. When I turn the key over, it does not start. Okay, I'm gonna put water in the dry DEF tank and then I'm gonna try starting the truck again to see if I can clear the message that is currently reading. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck now and see if the error message has cleared. And right now the DEF fluid level says 24%, so the error message stating that I could not restart it without adding more DEF has cleared, so I guess we're good to go.
in the Netherlands, they found that the SCR system was barely effective in urban stop and go and idling driving conditions. The exhaust has to be at about 200, 250 degrees to convert the ammonia, to create ammonia from urea. When you first start the vehicle up, you're not at that temperature. When you're idling, the engine's cooling down. When you stop and go driving, the engine's cooling down. If you're in that situation, it's not hot enough, you're not making enough ammonia, the NOx is going straight up the tailpipe. If you think back to the days when you saw the smoke coming out of the back of the vehicles, those are typically pre-1988 pre vehicles. And those were emitting at about a 10 or 11 gram per brake horsepower hour. In the 1990s, we started cutting that down. Mid-90s, we were at about five. By the end of the 90s, coming into 2000, we were at about two to one. And now at 2010, we're at 0.2. So we've been dropping by about an order of magnitude per decade. If we put in place a technology that sends us back to 90s or prior emissions from trucks, we are putting ourselves on a road that increases our costs and our health impacts, and that is not something we're ready to do. What they've done is they've said, to get better mileage out of the, out of the engine, we're going to emit more NOx. We're going to have this back-end treatment device, the SCR, that's going to catch all that NOx and treat it. So now we can adjust our engine to have very high NOx and get all the pollutants. Good theory, but our bag at the end isn't catching all the NOx. So what we've done is we've ramped up the amount of NOx that's coming out the engine, and we're letting it go untreated. There are certainly warning lights, just as there are in your car, that say if something's not operating right, a light comes on. And then you're supposed to go to the mechanic and get that fixed. Sometimes we stretch that limit. But we don't do that when the gas tank is low. I don't think it's fair for them to be able to drive from LA to Chicago or from LA to Denver. There's a number of cities in this country that are counting on the clean emissions from diesel engines at the 2010 standard to meet their clean air requirements within their city. And they're gonna be grossly disappointed with the actual results if there is no action taken today by the EPA. You've moved from back in 2001 saying, you know, here's the standard, meet it, and, and that's the expectation, to here's the standard, meet it, but if you're having trouble, we'll allow, you know, for an extensive uh, set of exemptions. And I think that's the, that's the part, you know, we need to get back to our roots here of saying, here's the pollution level we intended to set and you know, let's get there.